Hey YouTube, how's it going? I've got the new Acer Predator Helios 16 right here. Gone is the Helios 300 and N is the Helios 16. And they're also introducing a budget line, the Helios Neo 16, which it makes sense, not just because obviously it has a 16 inch screen, but because I don't think they've made a Helios 500 or 700 since 2021. Correct me if I'm wrong, but, and the reason for that I would say is it used to be you needed some big Hulkin 8, 9 pound laptops to really kind of push the boundaries of laptop performance. But anymore, unless you're putting like a full desktop size parts in it, like some I've seen some brands do like desktop chips or something crazy like that. You really don't, they can cool and support the power in a full size 6-ish pound gaming laptop that they used to be able to put into an 8 or 9 pound desktop replacement thanks to things like vapor chambers and liquid metal so obviously new this year is the 16 inch screen 2560 by 1600 quad hd 500 nit um, no hdr unfortunately the keyboard is per key rgb and it feels mechanical to me but they don't advertise it anywhere so i guess it's not because it definitely seems like something they would advertise the trackpad is glass um and this is the 4070 model the 4070 model is i want to say about $300 more, maybe $250 more than the 4060 model. And for that price, you get the 4070 and the glass trackpad. And that's really the only two differences that I can tell. You do get an extra port this year, which I love to see, especially on a full-size gaming laptop. I definitely think you should have more than four USB ports. Starting on the right side, you get your headphone combo jack, micro SD card reader, USB-A 3.1 port, uh, Ethernet port. On the back, you get two USB-C. I believe they're just 3.2, but they both support power delivery, display port, um, HDMI, your barrel port for your charger. And on your right side, two more USB-A ports that are USB-A 3.2. They've kind of kept the mostly mature look for the Helios this year, but they have added this little LED area on the back. Of course, you can turn this off in the settings if you are using this somewhere and kind of don't want it to stick out as a gaming laptop. And the other thing they've done for some reason is they include two extra vents. You can change your vents on here. I don't have them with me, but literally the other ones, these are like a silver and the other ones are gray. So you can choose from silver or gray. It would make more sense if the other ones were like red or blue or something. Instead, you just have, if you want to change your gray out for a different shade of gray, you can do that. All right, taking a look at the weight, the Helios 16 comes in at 2,560 grams, only 60 more grams than the 15.6 inch Helios 300 from last gen. As far as keyboard shortcuts, you get your standard keyboard shortcuts. Uh, on the top right, there's a shortcut for the PredorSense software there. At the top left, you do have what was previously just your turbo mode button. Now it can cycle between all four performance presets, or in the PredorSense software, you can set it back to only be turbo on or off. The screen is 500 nits, quad HD, 240 hertz, with 99.9% .9 sRGB and 79.7% .7 DCI-P3. Unfortunately, it's not HDR, but that's about the only negative thing you could possibly say about the display. There's also supposed to be a 1000 nits mini LED screen, but as of May 2023, there aren't any models out with that option yet. Battery life was 6 hours and 45 minutes streaming YouTube. You do get Advanced Optimus and 140 watt RTX 4070, although through no fault of Acer's, just like with every other RTX 4070 and 4060 mobile, you're not going to see power as much above 100. You also get a traditional MUX switch option inside the BIOS. Inside PredorSense software, which has been updated, you can choose between your different performance profiles. You can also set custom fan controls, um, which previously it was kind of like a Fox custom fan control. You could set them to 30%, but as soon as you were in a game or doing something where you were getting close to that thermal throttle, they would just go ahead and turn themselves up. So if you're running the system in balanced mode and playing Cyberpunk 2077, this is 1600p, the ray tracing medium preset, you can see the game is running at about 48 decibels, pulling a total system power of around 110 watts with fan speeds around 43 decibels. Fan noise. Um, in performance mode, the average frame rate has gone up by 5, the total system power is now 170 watts, and we're getting about 55 decibels for the fan noise. And next up is turbo mode. One important thing to mention here is that the fans no longer are locked at max speed no matter what you are doing once you put it into turbo mode. A great improvement since the only thing that did was just wear out your fans faster if for some reason you are browsing the internet or watching movies in turbo mode. However, once they detect gaming or anything remotely taxing on the system, they do quickly ramp up to max and 
actually, at least in this example here, the system is running at slightly less power with a slightly lower frame rate than it was in performance mode. Running a Cinebench multi-core stress test for excess of 20 minutes yielded an average CPU power draw of 115 watts with an average temperature of 83 degrees, and this was in turbo mode. Now, taking a look at our Cinebench scores, the Helio 16 got a single core score of 1842 and a multi-core score of 2050, 20,589. That's a 2% increase in the single core score and 11% increase in the multi-core score from the 12700H in the Helios 300 last year. Next up, 3D Mark Time Spy, the RTX 4070, got a graphics score of 12367, and the Helios got a combined score of 12757. For our first video game, a classic now to benchmark, Shadow the Tomb Raider at 1080p, the Helios 16 got a measly 115 frames per second. Bumping up to 1440p at ultra settings, it was 106 frames per second, 18% better than the 3070 Ti and the RTX 4060. With ray tracing turned on, it got 65 frames per second, which is 3% better than the 3070 Ti system, and 27% better now than the Pulse 15 with the RTX 4060. In Far Cry 6 at 1080p, the Helios 16 got 122 frames per second. If you bump it up to 1440p, it's 89 frames per second, a tie with the RTX 3070 Ti and the Alienware R7. And finally, just to take one look at our native Quad HD 16x10 resolution, it drops your FPS down 7 more to an average of 82 in Far Cry 6. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 1440p, it got 5 frames per second more than the RTX 3070 Ti, but a whopping 31 frames or 40% below the 13900HX and RTX 4080 in my Legion Pro 7. In Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p at ultra settings with AMD FSR turned off, it was actually 5 frames below the Alienware R7. However, bumping it up to ray tracing medium with DLSS off, it got 35 frames per second, pretty much tying. For our last game, Forza 5, at 1440p, the Helios 16 got 82 frames per second, once again tying with the 3070 Ti. So the takeaway from the benchmarks reinforces that the 4070 is, yeah, it's a disappointing generational improvement over the 3070 Ti, but still, with the exception of some newer games where the 8GB of VRAM is going to be problematic, like The Last of Us, the Helios 16 with the 4070 is still going to be able to run the majority of games at Quad HD at the higher end of the graphics setting slider, no problem. As far as price, the MSRP is $1,900, which is actually $200 less than what the 3070 Ti model was last year from Best Buy. And yeah, while the performance improvements are minimal, that's no fault of Acer's, the Helios does get some pretty nice updates, most notable being the screen is now half inch larger at 16 inches instead of 15.6, and it's 200 nits brighter. You also get an extra USB-C port this year, bringing the USB port total up to 5, which is what I think the minimum should be on a full-size gaming laptop. So yeah, a solid A-tier laptop from Acer this year. That's all I got. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them down below.